Hello, this is Brian. Today is Tuesday, June 7th, 2022. I am on Fiesta Island in Mission Bay in good old San Diego. And today I want to present a Spotlight on Plants video. Today's Spotlight is on something you're going to find in quite a few different areas from seashore to possibly even desert. And that is salt heliotrope. That's this plant here. This is Heliotropium, 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 Curasavicum, variety ovulatum. And it is a member of the forage family, the Boraginaceae. Although some botanists propose to split this off into its own family, the Heliotropia, Heliotropiaceae. So it's this plant here with the grayish green leaves and the pretty purple center white flowers. So this plant is a perennial meaning it persists for multiple years so this might live for a few to several years and it's very low growing kind of a ground cover plant not very high I haven't seen it more than maybe a several inches high if, at most uh, in my experience and here we are just a very short walk from the bay of Mission Bay and it likes these areas that accumulate salt because we're right near the water, the ocean. And they also like fairly sandy soil. Sometimes you'll find them along uh, and uh, creek beds as well. And I believe you can find these pretty far inland as well. I'm going to post the full and full range of this plant. Ours is variety Oculatum. I'm not sure if variety Crossavicum lives here, but ours, I believe, I believe all of them are variety Oculatum. So here we go. Got these narrow, these narrow grayish green leaves that are sessile. In other words, they don't have a leaf stalk or a petiole. And they're smooth edged, as you can see here. And they're alternately arranged along the stem. And then what's really attractive are these tiny coils, coil-shaped inflorescences, where we have these beautiful star-shaped flowers with a purple center on quite a few of them. And you can see the way the inflorescence comes coiling out. That's probably one of the reasons why this was listed as being in the borage family, the Brazinaceae, because a lot of those plants have the inflorescences that coil out like that. Well, that's pretty typical of Brazinaceae. Like I said, the Heliotropiaceae is a potential new family that might host this plant. if uh, botanists can come to agreement on, on it. So there's a lot of proposition of moving this to a different family. As you see, it can be quite common and locally abundant on the sandy, low-lying areas. I'm off on a little, little kind of out of the way side. The access road to Mission Bay winds around just over this bird right here. And I'll take you around the bay. But there are quite a few specimens here. Um, I've also seen them in some of our slightly inland canyons. I've seen them in uh, Ruffin Canyon. I've seen this plant. Let's see if I can find some more specimens. I'm kind of away from where a lot of the crowds are. So it likes these really sandy soils. Very 
very salt tolerant. I believe the plant is supposed to be toxic. In other words, very much inedible. So I wouldn't consider consuming any of it. And here we got some more right here. This one's a little tall, a little more upright, but for the most part you're looking at a, a nice herbaceous ground cover. Again, the the coils of flowers are quite attractive, quite noticeable. You have to really you have to get close to them to really to fully appreciate them. But I find this plant fairly easy to spot when I'm creeping along the side of the road here. I'm trying to see if I can find any more populations of it, but this little area we also have some plants with lizards associated, like mule fat Bacchus salicifolia, subspecies salicifolia, sometimes uh, in the same area. And that we're living next to the bay, we also have some non native mesms right here, like these ice plants and a non-native tamarisk, a.k.a. salt cedar. I think this is Tamarix ramosissima. It's one of those ta the winter deciduous tamarisks that sheds its leaves in fall, and it's leafless in winter, and it's not a conifer, not a cedar, a true cedar, but the branches of the plant kind of look like juniper twigs. So sometimes you'll find them growing on the side. A lot of these non-native ice plants, sage grub plants growing nearby. There's a nice little population of them along this little footpath here. You can see more of them growing. Let's take, uh, stay, uh, check out the, the uh, description section for a more comprehensive range of this plant. But it also looks like it does have to grow in disturbed areas as well. our coastal areas quite commonly here. What a neat plant. Uh, very much enjoy coming across it when I do. It makes a really good uh, makes a good little ground cover. And like I said, it's very salt tolerant. So if you live right near the ocean some type of native ground cover. There you have it. Heliotropium curasavicum variety oak bottom. A, another one of our awesome natives here in Southern California. And one that ended off looking at some more of these beautiful plants. See, even the caterpillars love them. There you have it. Heliotropium curasavicum variety oculatum. Salt or seaside heliotrope. Member of the Brajanaceae. And that will do it for this uh, Spotlight on Plants video. I hope you found it helpful in identifying more of our native flora here in California. And hope to see you on another Spotlight video. Thanks for watching.